The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with another exciting story from his brilliant career. This master of the big cats captures ferocious jungle beasts and trains them to perform under the big top in the circus, where there are always thrills, action, and danger. Hundreds of dramatic behind-the-scenes adventures are all part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here is the story of The Marvelous Marvins. The circus was playing Charleston, North Carolina, when a crisis, a very small crisis, occurred. I found myself playing the role of a lonely hearts expert, a role I was soon to learn for which I had absolutely no talent. What started out to be a tiny problem of one of my tiny performers quickly developed into a large headache for all of us. I had just finished my act, and Harriet and I were heading for our dressing room. Well, Clyde, another day, another performance. Two performances, Harriet. Don't forget the matinee. Oh, that's right. Oh, am I tired. Honey, why didn't you just go on to bed after you finished your turn? What? And then just toss around wondering if one of your cats was going to rip you to shreds? Oh, you'd rather be there to see it, huh? Clyde. Well, honey, I must admit I wouldn't feel right out in the arena without you standing by. You've done your act thousands and thousands of times, but every time you go on, I die a little. How do you think I feel when you put Primba and Anna Mae through their paces? Oh, but Clyde, my act has only two animals. You're in there with three dozen. Yeah, but your two are a tiger and an elephant. What a combination, about as safe as lighting a cigarette in a gunpowder factory. Oh, it's not that difficult. What's the matter? Don't you hear that? What? Those sobs. Hey, that sounds like a child sobbing its heart out. Oh, come on, it's over here in the shadow. Isn't that a little girl perched up there on that pile of canvas? Oh, it looks like it. Oh, she must be lost. It's not a little girl, Clyde. It's Myra. Myra? Oh, Myra, honey, what's the matter? Nothing, Mrs. Beatty. Just feeling kind of blue, that's all. Uh, look here, Miss Myra. As owner of this circus, it's my responsibility to see that everybody in the show is happy. Now, now, what's the trouble? Haven't you been treated right? It isn't that, Mr. Beatty. You've all been wonderful to me. Just wonderful. Uh, maybe, uh, may maybe the meals don't appeal to the you. The meals huh? have been perfect. Well, then it must be your billing. First thing in the morning, I'll tell Norman Carroll to give you a better spread. I'll have him print your name larger no. in the program. No. No. No matter how large you print it, the building will still read my written image. Oh. oh, you poor little thing. What do you mean, poor little thing? Why, Myra's the prettiest, the, the loveliest... Thank you, Mr. Baby. The... Sweet of you to say such nice things. <laughs> well, they're true. You are lovely. But I'm a midget. Just a midget. Now, look, Myra, you... you. I know what it is. You're lonesome, aren't you, Myra? Oh, yes, Mrs. Baby. Terribly lonesome. Oh, I see. Well... Mr. Circus Owner, the little lady is lonesome. Do something about it. Now, back to Clyde Beatty and the marvelous Marvins. Harriet and I were very tired after the performance, but not too tired to discuss the plight of lovely little Myra the midget. People just don't understand. Little Myra's exactly like any other woman. I know, honey, but... Her body, though, on a miniature scale, is perfectly formed. Her heart and soul... Well, you know the depth of emotion can't be restricted to physical measurements. All that doesn't alter the fact that Myra's unhappy. What are we going to do about it? Can't you understand how she feels? Suppose... Suppose you were just the size you are. And? And suppose everyone around you was 12 feet tall. I'd feel like a midget. Exactly. Oh, now, wait a minute. Imagine what it would be like. Come to think of it, it would be quite a situation. Oh, it certainly would. All the houses would be built to accommodate people 12 feet tall. Chairs would be built to that scale. Tables, telephone booths, cigarettes, chocolate malteds, seven-course dinners. Hey, that'd present plenty of problems. Indeed it would. I'd have to climb up a three-foot ladder to shave. And if you went to a movie, you'd have to sit on someone's lap to see the picture. <laughs> Sitting on somebody's lap at my age. The comparison seems ridiculous to you, doesn't it? Not ridiculous. It seems frightening. Mm -hmm. 
Now you know how tiny folks like Myra must feel. You know, darling, I've never thought of it in that way. You and a lot of other people. Must be plenty tough to be, well, to be unlike most other people. Mm, I don't know. It has its compensations. Everything in life does. What do you mean? Well, anybody can get inside a steel cage and flip a whip at a bunch of lions and tigers. Thank you, Harriet Beatty. But could this same individual face an existence where everyone around him was 12 feet tall? I surrendered it. Well, that's what little Myra has to do. I see what you mean. Now, what are we going to do? Myra's lonesome. She needs folks her own size to associate with. Of course. Harriet, darling wife, you're a positive genius. Now, look, fellas, I've done the best I could. I tell you, there just ain't a spot I've been able to book your act. What kind of an agent are you? Now, just a minute, Arvin. Sure, I'm your agency. I get 10% of all you guys make. Do you think I'd keep you out of work if there was a job for you? Listen, Wendy, Garvin and I are canceling our contract with you unless you come through with a job right quick. Is that right, Garvin? Right. Look, boys, I've tried everything. Vaudeville, motion pictures, television, everything. What's the matter? Aren't guys in show business interested in talent anymore? Sure, sure, but, but they ain't interested in the midget act, even if the midgets are twins. Listen, 10 percenter, Garvin and I will stack our acrobatic act against any in the business. Midgets, twins, or what have you. Right, Garvin? Right. You know, Arvin, I think we just got a wrong guy for an agent. Ah, oh, now, boys. He's a wrong guy from way back. Take it easy. Take it easy. Sure, the Marvelous Marvins is a great act. A great act. But you can't sell us. Why? You ain't being fair. You know I can still get you that Connie spot on Lick Pier. That's out. We aren't freaks. Oh, don't get me wrong. We're performers and we're good. Of course you are. Of course you are. But look at it from my side. Acrobats are a dime a dozen. Midget acrobats? Well... Twin midget acrobats? Well... Well? Look, I... You couldn't sell water in the Sahara Desert. No, wait. Well, excuse me, boys. Hello? Hello? Mr. Wendy Wilson, please. Charles from North Carolina calling. Yeah, put him on. Hello, Wendy. Yeah, this is Wendy. Who's this? Clyde Beatty. Clyde Beatty. Clyde Beatty? Hey, boys, it's Clyde Beatty, the circus guy. Wendy, are you there? Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm here, Clyde. Uh, what can I do for you? Uh, I want you to do me a favor. Oh, sure, Clyde, sure, anything. Need an act for your show or something? Hey, Wendy, how about us? Oh, I'm pretty well fixed for this season, but I could use some midgets. Some midgets. All right. Midgets? Y- you could use some midgets. Hey, that's us. That's right. Well, now, Clyde, I'm, I'd sure like to help you out, but getting midgets for your show is kind of a tough order. Shh, I got him over a barrel. Did you say I should talk to Farrell? Uh, no, Clyde. There uh, must be a bad connection. Why, you double cross? Take it easy. I tell you, I got this guy on the hook. <laughs> you say you got to have midgets, eh, Clyde? That's right. Maybe even a troop of them. I wish I'd known about it earlier in the season. Maybe I could have helped you out. Well, thanks just the same, Wendy. I thought you might know of some place I could find some. But uh, you're an old friend, Clyde. Uh, you know I'd do anything for you. Sure, Wendy, I know. Uh, say, there's uh, just a chance. Now, just a chance, mind you, that I might be able to get the Marvelous Marvins for you. Is he kidding? The Marvelous Marvins? Yeah, they're sensational. Twin brothers. They do a turn on a three-foot platform 50 feet up in the air. No net. Sounds good. Good. <laughs> Brother, they're amazing. Why? Okay, you... I'll take them. Not only is their act great, but they're twins. I said okay, I'll buy them. You'll buy them? Uh, well, now, I'm not too sure I can get them. What are you trying to do? He's brought us. Don't buy us back. I don't want to hold you up, Clyde, but if you want the act, it's going to cost you. Everybody in the business is after these boys. They're tired. Don't want to work. But maybe I can persuade them. Now, these boys get up on this platform, see? And they do a turn, see? 50 feet up, see? No net. Okay, Wendy, okay? Just get the marvelous Marvins and send them on. I'll pay your price. Quiet, baby. You have just made yourself a deal. Well, what did you accomplish, dear? Mm, to quote a certain very windy character, I has just made myself a deal. Oh, you got a midget <laughs> for the show? Two midgets. Good. The twins. Twins? <laughs> Wonderful. And they're acrobats. Oh, that's marvelous. I hope having new friends will please, Myra. Oh, it should. It should. Don't you know that all young girls go for handsome, muscular acrobats? Did you go for strong, muscular acrobats, Harriet? Mm Mm-hmm. And look what I wound up with. A lion tamer. Gee, 
Mr. Beatty. This is quite a spread you have. I'm glad you like it, boys. We sure do. And we're really grateful for having a chance with your show. According to what I've been told, I'm lucky to have been able to get the marvelous Marvin. According to a certain very mouthy guy named Wendy, that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did quite a selling job on you. He sold us and bought us back about five times. He had us scared to death. Well, I'm glad you're here. My brother and I are too, sir. Say, um, there's somebody over here I'd like you boys to meet. Let's go over to her dressing tent, huh? Huh? Did you say her? Yeah. She's a very lovely girl named Myra. Hmm, a lovely girl. And from the size of that dressing tent, I'd say she was just about my size. Now, now, take it easy, Garvin. I'm Arvin. He's Garvin. Oh, well... Well, let's see if the little lady's in. Myra. Just a minute. I'll be right there. Say, she has a beautiful voice. And she's a beautiful girl. Oh, Mr. Betty, it's you. <coughs> uh, Myra, this is Garvin. No, he's Garvin. I'm Marvin. Oh. Uh... Glad to meet you, Myra. Well, I'm not too sure I'm glad to meet you. I don't blame you, Miss Myra. My brother Arvin has a tendency to let himself get carried away. Please forgive him. Yes, I think... Now, just a minute, Garvin. You may be my brother, but I can speak for myself. Now, boys, let's not... Can I help it if you don't know how to conduct yourself in the presence of a lady? Boys. Nobody's going to tell Arvin Marvin how to conduct himself. Boys. As long as you keep acting like a wolf, somebody will have to. Gentlemen. No, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me. Now, look what you've done, Arvin. You made her angry. Look, fellas, If let's... you keep your big mouth shut... See here, boys, and I... if you didn't make a play for every pretty girl, you see, you'd be better off. Wait a minute, boys. It's because you don't... Oh, no. Oh, it's... What's the trouble? What's the matter with the Marvin twins? The best laid plans of mice and men. What in the world are you muttering about? Well, when I tried to find some little companions for a little lady, I never realized I'd be asking for a king-sized civil war. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's story about the marvelous Marvins. I should have known how futile it is for anyone to try to play Cupid. In the case of the diminutive Myra the Midget, I had only good intentions. I thought I was supplying her with companions of her own tiny stature by signing on the marvelous Marvins. The result was anything but what I expected. I found that a triangle, even if it's in miniature, is still a triangle. Oh, Clyde, I'm worried about those two little fellows. They've done nothing but quarrel since they signed on with the circus. I know. I guess I made a mistake, Harriet. Now, don't blame yourself, Clyde. You couldn't have known both of the Marvins would fall in love with little Myra. But they have. And now Myra's more miserable than ever. <laughs> don't forget. A woman is never happier than when she's miserable. Now, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, forget it, dear. Men aren't supposed to understand such things. All I know is that those two little guys act like they hate one another. Mm, they're just two guys after the same gal. Sure. And in about a minute, they're going to be on a three-foot platform 50 feet up in the air. I wish they'd stop arguing while they're up there anyway. Mm -hmm. Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty! Stop them! Don't let them go on! Myra, what is it? What's the matter? Please, don't let them go up on that platform! Well, no, 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 no. Take it easy, my dear. They've been doing that act a long time. Nothing's going to happen oh, to them. Mm -hmm. Maybe I had better stop them, Harriet. There's no use taking chances until we get this thing straightened out. Ladies and gentlemen, calling your attention high, high above the get general up, arena. Get up there, Mr. It's too late. They're up on the platform. The most miraculous masters of modern acrobatics, those mighty mites from the miniature world, Marvin and Garvin, the marvelous Marvin. <laughs> Listen, Arvin, I'm not afraid of you. Why don't you get wise to yourself? You can't cut me out with Myra. No, nope. you're just sore. She picked me instead of you. Picked you. Ha! Huh. She's just using you to make me jealous. Yeah? Well, you've got plenty to be jealous of. Why, you... Hey, hey, watch it! What are you trying to do? Kill me? It would be so easy. You crazy fool! It'd look like an accident. 
is taking hold. He's resting more comfortably. Oh, that poor little guy. He took an awful fall. If you hadn't tried to catch him, Clyde, he'd have been killed. I was lucky to break his fall. He still hit his head a terrible wallop. When will we know how bad the concussion is? Mm, Doc says he could stay unconscious like that for days. There's no chance that he'll... he'll die, is there? Yes, I'm afraid there is. I'll see who it is. Yes? Arvin. Yeah, it's me. Why did you come here? Why not? He's my brother, isn't he? Not so loud, not so loud. Wait, let me close the door. Now, what do you want? I want to know how my brother is. He's unconscious. He may die. Well, it was an accident. He slipped. I wish I could believe you. Can you prove it wasn't? It's not up to me to prove anything. The police will take over if Garvin dies. But, but an accident can always happen doing an act like ours. That's right, Arvin. Except that you and your brother have been quarreling over Myra, haven't you? Ah, uh, he thinks she's in love with him. Well, isn't she? Of course not. I'm the leader of us two. Garvin hardly even opens his mouth. How could she be in love with him? Because he's a gentleman. Meaning I'm not, huh? That's right. Nevertheless, I get what I want, and I'm getting Myra. Hadn't you better consult her about that? She's afraid to admit she loves me. But I know she does. You'd better forget about that, young fellow. You're in plenty of trouble. How come? There's a policeman on the grounds. If and when your brother regains consciousness, the officer's going to take his statement. If he verifies what I think is true, you're going to jail. It isn't true. He'd lie to pin this rap on me. They could put you away for a long time on an attempted murder charge. No, they couldn't do that. I couldn't stand it. I will not have pinned it on me. Arvin, wait. Where are you going? Little fool. He's making a break. Leave you, Mrs. Beatty. You'd better get some sleep now. Thank you, Myra. He's resting very easily. I'm certain he's going to be all right. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. You're in love with Garvin, aren't you? Yes, Mrs. Beatty. Yes, I am. Well, keep an eye on him. If he awakens, call me immediately. I will. Good night. Good night, my dear. Oh, my darling. You must get well. You must. It's such a big, big world. It would be so empty without you. Oh, darling. Carvin. Carvin. Um, Myra. It's you. I thought it was an angel. Oh, darling. Darling, you're all right. Sure. Sure. My head sure hurts, though. Oh, don't try to move. I'll get the doctor right away. Please, uh, don't leave me. I don't ever want to leave you. Where, where's Arvin? Mr. Beatty and the police are chasing him. He ran away. The fool. The crazy little fool. They think he may have made you fall on purpose. Did he do it, Garvin? Yes. Yes. He let me fall. How could he have done such a thing? How could he have done it? What will the police do when they catch him? They'll punish him. Give him the punishment he has coming to him. Now, don't talk anymore. I'll call Mrs. Beatty. She'll get the doctor. How could you have done it, Arvin? How could you have done it to me? Well, Mr. Beatty, we've covered the entire lot. You men have checked outside. The little guy just isn't here. Well, there are a hundred places someone his size could hide in here, officer. He must be somewhere around. Well, what do you suggest? We'll just have to keep on looking. Okay. Say, Mr. Beatty, do you think that little guy is dangerous? I mean, would he try anything? He might. After all, there's every reason to think he tried to kill his brother. I doubt that it was premeditated, probably acted in a fit of passion, but nevertheless... What is it? Over there, behind that stack of props, I saw something move. Let's go. It's Arvin. I saw him duck his head. Come on out, Arvin. It's him, all right. All right, Arvin. We know you're in there. You can't get away. Come on out. Okay, I'm coming in. 
Hey, what are you trying to do? Here you are. Put up that gun, you little fool. Now move or I'll shoot. You've made one mistake, Arvin. Now don't make a bigger one. You can't get away with this, little man. The first one of your moves gets it. Look, if your brother recovers and doesn't testify against you, you'll be in the clear. I can't take that chance. He might lie to get me out of the way. Come on now, put up that gun. Stand back. You'd never get away, you know. Come on, let me have the gun. Hey, he missed me. Come on, let's try to get him before he hurts somebody. What did the doctor say, Mrs. Beatty? He's going to be all right. Oh, thank goodness. Honey, go ask Mr. Beatty to come in. He's just outside. Mr. Beatty, will you come in now? Hello, Myra. Hello, oh, Mr. Beatty. Clyde, the doctor said you can ask Garvin a few questions now. Oh, good. But only a few. Hmm. How are you doing, Garvin? Fine, Mr. Beatty. Fine. You mind if I ask you a few questions? No, sir. Go ahead. Um, do you know that your brother, Arvin, has run away? Yes, sir. He, he probably got frightened. The police think your fall might not have been an accident. What about it, Garvin? If it wasn't an accident, Mr. Beatty, what would they do with Irvin? Well, they could indict him for attempted murder. They, they, they'd put him away, wouldn't they? Yes, they would. Mr. Beatty, my brother... Yes? Irvin didn't drop me. What? I, I slipped. It was an accident. An accident. But, Garvin, you... you... Oh. Is that the way you want it, fella? That's the way I want it. Okay. Now, you go to sleep and just forget about it. Hey, Mr. Beatty, come out here. There's somebody on the roof. What? <clears throat> you stay here, Harriet. What did you say, officer? Up on the roof, up right there. Who is that up there? Where? Uh, it's Arvin. It's him. He's jumping down. He's coming over here. Yeah. Arvin, what were you doing up on the roof? Right. Well, what were you doing up there? I was on the roof. I listened through the ventilator. You did? I heard what my brother told you. And you wouldn't have had to run away, Arvin. You see, your brother's quite a guy. He... I know. He's quite a guy. Quite a wonderful guy. <laughs> You'd better come along with me, son. There's a little matter of shooting off that gun that we've got to attend to. That's right, Arvin. The laws in this country govern people of any size. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> Wasn't that a beautiful wedding, Clyde? Sure was. <laughs> Myra and Garvin looked like they should have been decorating the cake instead of walking down the aisle. <laughs> oh, I've never seen a lovelier bride. Or a happier one. Oh. I wonder how Arvin is making out. Oh, he'll be out on probation pretty soon. What do you suppose came over him to make him do such things? Aren't you the one who told me about midgets being like anyone else? <laughs> That's right. They can love, hate, make mistakes. Sure. They can also be punished, have a change of heart, and be forgiven. Even as you and I. And now, here is Clyde Beatty to tell about his next adventure. One of the most dangerous and exciting adventures of my entire life took place while on an expedition in the dense jungles of the Congo in Africa. Our guide was a young woman animal dealer known as Jungle Joe, and our quarry was a huge gorilla. I'll tell you the whole story when next we meet. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world-famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. The Marvelous Marvins was written by Robert T. Smith and Frank Hart Plussig. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. Commodore production.